Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and member of PMDG's tech team. A lot of you have asked me in my previous videos, how do I plan my flights? Could I make a tutorial about how to plan them? So here we are. Let's start with the most basic decision. Where do I want to fly? And you see I've already opened Flight Radar 24 because that is one of the main sources I'm using to get the actual information about, or rather the basic information about my flights. Some of you will notice that I'm logged in with a gold subscription in the upper right corner, but everything I'm going to show you can be done with a free version. You don't even need an account as far as I'm aware. So let's start off easy. What you see is not easy, at least not on the first glance. So let's have a quick look. If you just randomly want to pick a flight, then you can always start by, for example, setting a filter and just filtering everything for the Boeing 737 only. So if you go on filters, add filter, and we want to filter by aircraft type, and then we enter, for example, B73, new filter. Enable, then all of a sudden you are only going to see Boeing 737 aircraft. You can specify it further, for example, by typing B737, then it's only going to give you the 737-700, or B738 for the 737-800. If you have a premium version of Flight Radio, you, you can specify it further, then you could add, for example, an, another filter by airports or by airlines. But with the free version, you can still add one filter as you like. So now we could, for example, click on the aircraft. And over here, we'd have a Norwegian from Stockholm to Palma de Mallorca as an example. And once you're done with it, don't forget to remove the filter again in case you will ever wonder why you, there may be so little aircraft showing. Another method that I personally really prefer is the data and history tab. I honestly think that's one of the best functions of flight radar for flight simulation. So let's say we want to fly, for example, from Düsseldorf. Then we click on airports, enter the either IATA or ICAO code, click on the airport, go to routes. Now flight radar is showing us all airports that within the next seven days will be flown to from Düsseldorf. And if you now click on an airport, for example, if we go on split over here, it's going to give us all the flights and the flight data for those flights down here. So for example, we have Condor flight 1152. We can just click on it. And then we get some basic information about the flight, like the aircraft type, and the scheduled departure and arrival times. And if we click on play, then over here, you also get the real life call sign of that flight. And that is something that we'll get back to later on when we reach the sim brief part of this tutorial. Another method that I want to show you real quick is on data history, then you go by airlines. So let's say we want to, for example, fly a Ryanair flight. Then we could just type in Ryanair, RYR, or FR, click on it, go on routes, and now you see a map of all the airports that Ryanair is flying to. And if you want to specify this further, and say for example, I have a very good scenery in Copenhagen, so I want to go there. Put your mouse over Copenhagen, click on it, and then on the bottom here, you can see all flights that Ryanair is flying from Copenhagen. Be sure to sort it by either whether you want to depart there or you want to arrive there. And now here you go. All flights that Ryanair is operating from Copenhagen in the next seven days. You can see when they're flying, you can see which equipment they're using, so which aircraft, and you can see uh, which days. 
And if you then decide, I want to go from Copenhagen to somewhere, then you just click on the flight number again, and there you've got your data for the flight. Let's now say, I want to go from Dublin, and I wish to fly to, of course we'll have great choices here, with Dublin being Ryanair's main airport, but I want to fly from Dublin to Let's call it London Stansted Airport. And I want to fly this flight FR206. I'm clicking on it. I click on play. So I've got my call sign. I've got the schedules. And if I really want to th take things to an accurate level, I can zoom in here. I can even see which gate they're parked on. So that is how I decide which flight I'm going to do, which gate I'm going to use, and what my call sign is going to be. Now, once we've decided on that, we'll head over to SimBrief and start actually planning. So, some of you asked me to give you a tutorial about um, how I set up my aircraft in uh, my fleet. I'm going to do that quickly at the end of this video. But for now, we'll go on new flight. So, Let's copy some data from FlightRadar. We are the FR206, so airline, Ryanair, flight 206 from Dublin to Stansted. And for an alternate, we'll take something that's close by, for example, London Gatwick. Quickly check the weather at each airport. If you hold your mouse over the weather symbol, you're going to get that small pop-up. And that's just to get a rough overview of what things look like. It's most important for your destination and for the destination alternate to make sure that your alternate is actually suitable. Then we want to fly today. Departure time. Of course, you can choose anything you like. We'll just take it from flight radar here. That's 0720. Our aircraft. I've set up a couple of airframes here. Already, so we'll just go down and take Echo India Sierra Echo Victor. Quickly verify that the uh, profiles are correct. Registration is correct. FIN number, they don't have any. Cell call, the aircraft doesn't have one. ATC call sign, we'll go to flight radar once again with the Ryanair 74 Lima Echo. So Ryanair 74 Lima Echo. Now let's go further. Scheduled flight time. Again, we can get this from flight radar. So if you see here, it's due to depart at 7.20 and due to arrive at 8.35. That's now around 15 minutes. So let's take scheduled flight time. One hour and 15 minutes. Simbrief is usually giving you a very generic scheduled flight time. So it's usually much longer than the real schedules are. So I really prefer to take it from flight radar because then I can just try to put this in the operational context when I'm flying the actual flight in the simulator. And then I can just decide, okay, um, hey, I might be running a, b a little bit late here. Let's see if I can negotiate some direct with ATC and all this kind of stuff. Departure runway. Again, we'll decide that based on the wind and don't always rely on the sim brief runways here. Have a quick look at the weather. So the wind is 153 degrees at 8, slightly variable. So 28 left is okay. It's a slight tailwind component, but they do have a preferential runway system for the uh, 28 in Dublin as far as I'm aware. For the arrival, Stansted, it's variable 6. The forecast is 140 at 6 and not due to change prior to our arrival. Well, it's becoming from 0, 0900 onwards, 210 at 12. So there is a chance that ATC is going to use Romay 22, so that's okay. Taxi out, taxi in, big airport, 15 minutes is usually fine and eight minutes usually as well. 
extra fuel. And that's why you'll want to decide if you are going to take any um, additional fuel. I usually would only use the minutes option and not the kilogram option because the time is really what counts. If you're thinking fuel, you always have to think time and not amount unless you're considering the maximum landing weight, but that's something we're going to do at a later point. So do you want to take extra fuel? Or rather, do you want to take any plant extra fuel? This is where we'll put it in. Altitude? We'll leave it in auto for now, but we'll get back to it later on. For the passengers, you can either leave it in auto, or usually most airlines in Europe have a load factor of around 75%, so you could calculate something there. Ryanair is flying with quite a bit more, as far as I've seen in the latest um, reports. So, you could just say our airplane is going to be full. Then for the freight, let's say we're going to take some 400 kilograms along. A quick word here that I'm going to get uh, back to later on. I've changed my aircraft profiles in SimBrief so that the passenger weight only reflects the passenger and the hand luggage weight, but no longer any bags. Because in today's airline world, it is not the standard anymore that everybody is, twen is uh, carrying a 23 kilogram bag in the hold, as SimBrief assumes by default. I'm going to show you how to change that at the end of this video. So personally, I'm always using the freight tab in order to load the passenger's luggage. So with a full aircraft on a route like this, it's mostly going to be uh, business people there. They don't usually carry more than hand luggage. So 400 kilos, taking account a couple of bags, maybe some company mail. So the fuel weight will leave on auto. The names, self-explanatory. Dispatch remarks. For example, here you could enter the departure gate or the arrival gates that you can look up on flight radar so that you have them on your flight plan when you need them on the go. Now the route. That is something I would like to spend a little bit more time on. Um, what I always do first is check this website, edi-gla.co.uk. That is a real-world flight plan database. And I'm going to show you that up here now. So you have to create a free account in order to use this website. And once you've done so and logged in, you will see this window here. Now we go on search. We are departing Dublin and we are landing at London Stansted. Search. And now it's giving us recent flight plans that um, volunteers have uploaded into the system. You are not going to find flight plans for every route. But if you're using real-life routes, like I've just chosen from FlightRadar, there is a good chance that they are going to have a real-world flight plan in here. So let's see, 7 for Lima Echo, that's our flight from the 2nd of April. But we have one that's even more recent from the 29th. So let's go on this. And then we can see here the route that's been filed from the actual flight, as well as the flight level. Now the flight level is something we're going to take off with SimBrief, but the route will definitely take. That's Direct NDAC, Quebec 36 Noslo, Zulu 197 Listo. We're going to copy that. And it's actually what SimBrief suggested as default already here. But if SimBrief was suggesting anything else, I would copy and paste this route that we've just gotten from Edigla. Because they are usually the best. The Simbri suggested routes are usually fine, especially if they show this um, little E symbol here. In Europe, that means it, that it's Euro Control verified. There are also other symbols like FlightAware, which has a lot of routes for the United States. But I'm usually defaulting to the Edigla routes because they are what the actual airlines dispatch as have brought up for those flights. Of course, if you're doing something longer like a transatlantic flight, then you might want to um, rather take the SimBrief generated route because it will be more suitable for the winds. But for anything within Europe or for any short flight, those Edigla routes are usually the best, in my opinion. Now, one more quick word here. 
and that is this your root is valid for IRAC 2204. Don't particularly trust Zimbrief that just because it says the root is valid that it really is. Because all Zimbrief is checking is are the airways connected to one another in the IRAC. It's not checking for example one-way airways or airways that are only open at a certain point in time. But what you can do here is you click on if you're flying in Europe that is. If you're not flying in Europe skip over this part. You click on IFPS validation it's going to give you this flight plan. Copy flight plan. Click up here on the public network, sorry, public network operations portal. That will bring you right to the Eurocontrol website. When you are here, go down a little bit, and in the flight planning tab, you have the free text editor. You paste the Simbrief copied flight plan in here. Click on validate, and that is validating it against the real-world Eurocontrol database. So if it says over here, no errors, then you have a valid flight plan or at least a valid route and altitude combination and aircraft combination that you would be allowed to fly in real world. So this is always what I do to make absolutely sure that, my, that there is nothing wrong with my flight. Because even with the route you've taken from Edigla, it might have been out of date. You can always see when it's been uploaded to Edigla. So, once again, date added, 29th of April. Now, this is pretty current since we have the 9th of May when I'm recording this. But routes may be a little old or maybe a couple months old for the particular flight that you are planning. So, using this Eurocontrol um, validation is always a very good thing to do in order to verify that you are um, actually filing a correct route. Well, this brings us a little bit further down. Next, what we can do, alternate airports, you can customize them if you like. Usually Simbrief is already, um, usually Simbrief is already predetermining a route for you. Then ETOP scenario, there will be a separate um, tutorial how to plan an ETOPS flight using the Boeing business jet at some point in the future, but that's not for yet. And then finally, when you have your map, always have a quick look at the significant weather chart. You might have to zoom out a little bit if it's just a short flight. So what we're looking at over here is, um, is there any icing forecast along our route? Is there any turbulence forecast along our route? And um, I'll leave it. It would be out of the scope of this tutorial to explain you how exactly the significant weather chart works, but if you just run a quick Google search, then um, you will quickly be taught all the different symbols that you have in here. For now, for now, all we have to take care of is this one. That's between flight level 250 and 150. So we want to plant something that's above level 250. We'll keep that in our mind. And then finally, let's also have a quick look at the winds. By default, it's showing you flight level 340. You can see that's quite a good tailwind there. Let's just got an impression, 390. Have a look at them as well. And uh, finally, flight level 300 will check as well. You can see the winds are pretty similar, but generally tending to be stronger at higher altitudes on today's flight. That might be different per flight. So if just have a careful look there. Now, the last thing that we want to uh, check is the pre-selections over here. So, OFP layout, well, we're planning a Ryanair flight, so let's also use Ryanair's layout. The units is kilograms. Contingency fuel, 5% of 5 minutes is a good default in Europe. You can, of course, also take the EASA rules. That is also going to be a very good um, plan. If you do take the EASA rules, it's going to ask you, would you automatically select an en route alternate? For long flights, you can do it. For short flights, I would not recommend you to do it. Because what's going to happen if you have an en route alternate is that your contingency fuel will be reduced from 5% to 3%. But on a short flight like this, having that little bit of extra fuel to play with in case you get a rerouting 
from air traffic control or in case you might have to fly holding or in case you name it then it's just a good idea to actually carry the uh, correct amount of fuel reserve fuel it's usually 30 minutes um, according European legislation other parts of the world may use different and we do want a detailed nav log ETAPS planning I'm always keeping it checked even though it's not required on most flights and Simbrief is also not doing it on those flights then plan step climbs yeah we wanted to do that we don't need to run my analysis we do have a one time no times but the FIR no times are usually too much we also want to take detailed flight maps to have another look at the route later on and now that we've decided everything we're going to click generate flight yes overwrite the previous flight and here we are now let's quickly go over the screen basically the summary you have up here is the data you have entered and the data Zimbrief automatically calculated it's also giving us a dispatch remark here plant optimum flight levels that means that Simbrief has by itself evaluated how much fuel you would burn if you would go to a higher altitude or a lower altitude. So if it says plant optimum flight level, then you can assume that 370 is the level where you're going to have the least fuel burn. And the block fuel is going to be 4,459 kilograms with a flight time of 57 minutes. Now, if Simbrief did not say plant optimum flight level, so let's think for a moment that this text would not be here. Then I would go ahead and memorize 4,459 kilos of fuel at flight level 370. I would click on edit and then try to calculate manually, for example, flight level 350. Generate, yes. So I'm going to try 2,000 feet higher and 2,000 feet lower just to see, for example, if the fuel flow is going to be different, because Simbrief does not always optimum the uh, sorry Simbrief does not always optimize the flight level. So in case here you can see we're burning some 20 kilos more. Let's also calculate flight level 390 real quick. Four four seven four. So again, a bit more as a compared to both level of three seven zero and three five zero. So we'll just put it back into auto, and then it will um, come up with the most economical flight plan once again. This is always a check that I like to do with my flights, just to be on the uh, sure side that we've actually calculated the most economical flight level. So when we are going down now, you can see all of a sudden it's, it becomes OFP number four instead of the usual one. And that is because this is the fourth iteration of the flight that we have calculated. Now let's have a quick look to make sh absolutely sure that there is nothing wrong with our flight plan. So we quickly check call sign, aircraft, flight times. Over here you can already see you're going to land at 8.32, the schedule is 8.35, so it's a pretty tight flight. So we don't want any additional delay. Have a quick look at the weights as well to make sure that the estimated weights are below the maximum weights. And then finally, quick look at the fuel to make sure that we have everything we need. Finally, Simbrief Downloader is a tool that I can absolutely recommend. And... What I'm going to tell you now is a little bit more about um, how to use it with a PMDG 737 rather than general Simbri flight planning. But let me quickly show this to you. So we have our Simbri downloader here and I want to export both a PMDG flight plan as well as a PMDG wind uplink. And in order to use those with a PMDG 737, you have to find your flight simulator folder that is not the general installation folder but that is usually within your app data but the path varies whether you have the steam version or the standard version you can find the exact path in the introduction manual that comes with a pmdg 737 and then you want to export the flight plan into the pmdg aircraft 737 
work flight plans directory and you want to export the width uplink into PMDG 737 work weather directory. And if you have that set and you can then apply a small trick, you can change settings and then you have this always export new flights automatically. Important disclaimer. The important disclaimer is saying that you are going to generate a lot of files if you take that option. Because every time that you calculate an OFP in SimBrief, it is now exporting the data to your computer. Personally, I'm accepting, sorry, I'm accepting this. It does produce quite a couple of uh, flights or of flight plans, but note how I've only checked the Aerosoft CIJ, which I've also put in my Microsoft Flight Simulator and the PMDG data. So that way I'm limiting the amount of uh, files I'm generating so that the file size doesn't become too big. Now, with all these automatic export functions on, what's happening is that all my data is automatically exported. So whenever I calculate a SimBrief flight, I have the data available in my PMDG 737 in the simulator. And that is a very good way to get around the limitations we currently have due to Asobo not enabling PMDG to communicate with the outside world from the aircraft. So we can currently not directly interface the 737 with uh, the SimBrief API online, but using this workaround, we have the data readily available in the flight. The final thing to do is just have a quick look at the weather and no times for your airport especially the no times since we have not reviewed these um, during the planning stage. So we're going to check on those now. The, the most important things we're looking for is the runway section here. Make sure there is uh, no relevant runway closure like there is over here. So you can see here runway 1634 is closed and not available for takeoff or landing except for certain rescue operations. And we also want to see the approach procedures to check if, uh, for example, the ILS may be inoperative. We do the same at our destination airport, but for Stansted, currently there is uh, nothing except a rename one radar station and for our alternate airport Gatwick. So this is just all that we finally want to check. All right, and this is how I plan my flights. So I hope that you have enjoyed this and found it useful. If you do, please leave a like and comment, especially leave a comment with suggestions, what you are doing different and if there is anything that I could probably dif do different. But this is it for today's video. Thank you very much and enjoy your flights. <laughs>